but we got to get rid of the, the toxins that we have, our mm-hmm. phones, all this relationships that are holding us back, our jobs. Hello, everybody. This is Josh Rubin, host of the Wheelbarrow Profits podcast, here with my co-host, the multifamily mentor, the coach, the chef, the father of six, the best-selling author, the G-Daddy, Gino Barbaro. How's it going today? Mr. Rusin, this is where I'd say, how you doing, bro, Stenziano, but I got my other boy on today. I'm doing good. How are you? Doing well. Super excited to be here. You know, super excited about the upcoming weekend and a lot of things going on, going on here. Gino, actually, what do we have going on this weekend, by the way? Uh, this weekend, we have a money mixer down in uh, Jacksonville. So this is for the Jake and Gino community. Any education members, it's great. We're doing a bus tour. I think we've got 60 people coming, Josh. We've got a big bus going out to two different properties, a little money mix, a little main event afterwards. It's just an awesome event for our community members. Um, personally, Josh, we've got three refis going on. We're closing a big deal in Kentucky, 240 units. That's really exciting. Um, just on the front end, as far as the Jake and Gino community, you know, we're, we're getting all these amazing students coming on board. People want to learn multifamily. So it's, it's going really good. And this is, I'm, I'm excited for today's guest for a lot of reasons, because if it wasn't for this today's guest and what he talks about, Jake and I would not be able to be where we are. Um, let, me, let me introduce Steve first before we get him on. His name is Stephen Griffith. He's the author, speaker, researcher, and performance expert, considered one of the leading authorities on the connection between time, productivity, and performance. His newest book to be released by McGraw-Hill, The Time Cleanse, a proven system to eliminate wasted time, realize your full potential, and reinvest in what matters most, provides a strategic and effective approach to changing our relationship with time, allowing organizations and individuals to close performance gaps and realize their full potential. So without further ado, Steve, how are we doing? I'm doing great, man. Great to be here with you guys. Thanks. So give us a little background. I mean, we need you now because with the, with the internet going on, with cell phones, everyone's got too busy. Give me a background of how you started. You know, I know you and Josh have a little battle going on between each other. So let's, <laughs> let's dive into that too. Sure. So, you know, here's the deal, man. Our time is our most valuable and precious asset today. And it's a thing that everyone's craving. I mean, you just go into you know, a, a coffee shop and go out on the street and look around. People are on their phones, they're multitasking. We're all affected by it. So about five years ago, working with my corporate clients, my individual clients, I saw this roadblock they were all having. It was all in one week, actually. And they use the same words, I don't have enough time. And I realized for me, I was like, wow, man, it's affecting me too. And as I kept looking at it, I made a decision. How do I fix this problem? Been a coach a long time to help people close those gaps. But I realized the biggest gap people were having today was time. Not having time for what they wanted to do, to invest in their business or be with their family. So after five years of research and looking at it, I realized something. That we were working with outdated tools and methodology and our relationship with time had to change to come along with how our lives at this fast pace of technology. So what do you normally get pushback from, from people when they say, I'm gonna claim back time, or time is my pros, most precious aspect. How, how do you counter that argument? Well, when they say it's not? Well, either that or they're like, you know what? Uh, I'm too busy. I mean, what do you start with that? Cause I've got a brother who says that to me all the time. I want to kill him. And I'm like, you, we all have the same amount of time. Why is this person doing more than you? What do you, how do you counter their argument? Well, I counter the argument with what's your relationship with time? It's the first thing I ask them, mm-hmm. you know, and I have in the book, I have a little quiz, you know, what's your relationship with time? Do, do you feel like time is supporting you that it's helping you? Or do you feel that you're fighting it in your battle? And I just ask them, do you want to stop fighting with time? It's pretty oh. simple. Like, it, no, it is. And so give us some tips on uh, what you would tell clients. How do, you get, how do you get back and claim back your time? Okay, so first of all, it's really simple. We start with what I call timefulness. It's a word that I'm introducing. And it's, it's about being present and aware and intentional with your time. I'm going to say that again. Present, you're right here, you're aware and intentional with your time. So that starts with the time comes from you. You own it. Here's what I hear a lot of people saying, you know, all the time if my schedule allows, if time allows, right? So this is what I say to them. And this is what I said to myself five years ago when I was researching this, who's time? People go, if time allows, it's me. Mm -hmm. So we create this victim mentality that we've been trained to believe. So we immediately just do one thing, stop the nonsense, claim it and go, it comes from me and I'm going to have a good relationship with it. And when we start doing that, 
man, things change, but here's the most important thing. This is one of the things your listener can, you can do and your listeners can do right now. Go on a time excuse diet. Just stop using time as an excuse. Now, so, how do we do that? I don't have, so we just say like, wow, I'm committing to this or I'm not. Just take time out of it because time is us. We're, we, it's, the big, it's like a little blanket. It's a little security blanket. Oh, I can't because of time. We are. So we immediately just say, I'm choosing to do that or I'm not choosing to do that, but we don't use time as an issue. Mm -hmm. That's the illusion of keeping us stuck. And when we do that, we start claiming back time and time pressure drops. See, old relationships with time management strategy puts us at an adversary relationship. We had an hour, we got to get the most done in it and it creates pressure. So when we're timeful, we're present. And the other thing to this, we got to stop multitasking. This is a epidemic of low productivity and performance. And I know you're a performance guy. We got to be focused. And, I, and we can talk today about some of the techniques to be focused, but we got to start with being focused right now because not being focused is killing our, our, our ability to perform. But here's the other thing. It's really, really challenging our connection in our world. I mean, time for me in this book is about creating memories that matter. We can talk about making money. We can talk, and, and I, man, I want to make as much money as I can and, and give back. But here's the thing, man. We're using our time to create great memories. And those memories are our legacy. And so we got to get clear. That's happening now. This is not on our deathbed. No one's on our deathbed saying, man, I wish I would have been on Facebook for another two hours. Wow, I wish I would have put some more Instagram on. So it's getting clear in the time cleanse process. First, identifying, what do I want? I like that. So I'm, I'm going to go on a, on a, on a one-minute rant because it sounds like you're, you're cut from the life coaching cloth. Right. You want people to get clarity, first thing. Yep. I think the second thing is you want people to become empowered. You want them to discuss to themselves that I want to claim back my time, not be a victim. Victim, to, to me, is a level one energy. It's a catabolic energy. You want to be able to raise a person's level of energy to a four. We, at, at IPEC, we call it four, five, six, to an anabolic state where you're actually becoming empowered and, and you have that positive, you know, refreshing and forcing energy. If you can't do that with a person, they're not going to claim back their time. So I, it sounds as if that's what you're going to do. Absolutely. And that's important. I think people have to realize that. And it's also important for people to become conscious and aware of their thoughts. Because if they're not, they're not going to be able to, to, uh, to, to dive into that. So I, I like a couple of things you said. Also, the multitasking. I totally and 100% agree with you with multitasking. I can't watch the TV and talk to my wife at the same time. I'm just not built like that. Um, I think my wife can do three things at a time. I think I don't want to. I don't want to generalize, but I think women are better at multitasking than men. But I just think multitasking is a fallacy. Read the one thing, focus on that one thing, get it done, and then move on to something else. I totally agree with you on the multitasking. What do you think about multitasking? So, so here's the thing. I, I have a lot of buddies and friends that have written great books on nutrition. And it's like telling people not to eat sugar. So I'm going to counter myself here a little bit. <laughs> so in the book, I have a whole section, what I call how to mindfully multitask. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can tell people not to eat sugar. They're going to eat sugar. You tell people not to multitask and they're going to do it. So here's what we do. First of all, we understand that when we multitask, just think about we've just dropped our IQ 10 points. That's what the research shows. Mm -hmm. We're not on our top of our game. So being aware, okay, I'm going to start doing things. And also, as you said, multitasking really isn't multitasking. It's task switching. It's going from one task to the other. True multitasking is riding a stationary bike and talking on the phone or folding clothes and talk. That's, so we're talking about switching tasks. Mm -hmm. And when we switch tasks, that's when our brain power and our awareness drops. So here's what I like to do is a know that you're multitasking and think about responding to different things versus unconsciously just reacting like, like you're looking for the squirrel. Secondly, set a timer and speed multitask on low level activities. You got to clean up your emails. You got to do stuff on your computer. You want to talk to a friend? No problem but don't engage in multitasking on high value dollar activities or relational activities. And when we do that, it can be very mindful. You know, I'll, I'll get on the phone with a buddy and be doing some stuff around the house or cleaning up some emails. I'm aware I'm multitasking, but I'm not talking to a client on an issue or on a sales call or on a podcast or I'm just not doing that. Mm -hmm. Because we're gonna have to redo it and here's the thing, when I see all the clients I work with corporately and individually to help take their game to the next level and perform, um, each one of them 
have had a major issue in their career or personally because of multitasking. So do you think, something. yeah, do you think then um, people say when they're in the zone, that's the higher levels of energy. When you're in the zone and you don't multitask or you do multitask, you're dropping that IQ. That's one of the reasons why you can't get into the zone because you're not multi, because you're multitasking. So if you can focus and take that off the table, that's why you can actually get in the zone and, 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 and perform at a high level. Do you know exactly? And here's the thing, the more we multitask, the more we train ourselves not to perform at a high level. So mm -hmm. here's what I hear a lot from high performers as well. Oh, I can turn it on and off. Well, I'm not saying you can't, but if all day you are multitasking, okay, and now you're at your son or daughter's ball game, or you're with your wife, husband, whoever that is, or you're in an important negotiation, and you've been training yourself not to be present. Mm -hmm. Not saying you're not gonna perform well, you just won't perform as well as you could have. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're gonna miss moments in our life. You know, I can't tell you how many executives I say, listen, take your phone, shut it off, hide it in the back seat, trunk, car at home when you go to your kid's ball game. Just don't even have it there. Mm -hmm. These are moments you can't get back. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's a big passion I have in the book is getting people saying, okay, what do I want? Getting that time back, right? And then investing it, investing it back in your business. You know, stop making an excuse as, oh, I can't make those sales calls. I can't do the research on that potential buy on a real estate project. Because once again, in your line of work, I mean, when you're in analyzing deals, that's, that can affect your entire life. Mm -hmm. And so let's get rid of the, th the toxic things that are distracting us in our life, period. You know, let's get rid of the hours where we're on Facebook or social media or with people that are toxic. And that's really what the time cleanse does. We, we evaluate our entire life. And we look wow. exactly where we're putting our time and how much. And then I have clients do this, the magic question. Is this contributing or contaminating to my happiness and success? So once we write down everything in that time cleanse, then we decide what we're keeping, what we're shifting, what we're getting rid of. And most people, when they do this, get a minimum of 10 hours back most a week, most people get 20 or more and they are shocked. Here's the beauty of it. When you start analyzing where you you spend your time, most people have completely distorted the first column in the time cleanse is technology. I guarantee you nine out of 10, 10 people. When I take them through the first column to get an hour back a day, because this is what I hear. Oh my God. I, I didn't realize I was on Facebook three times, mm -hmm. right? I mean, we can all relate to it. And, you know, and as the, as the developer of this and, and the spokesperson of getting, you know, helping people get their time back, I'm not immune to it. I mean, I, 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 the other day I had, I had a couple TV things and I was like, on my phone, I was like, oh man, hold on, stop. I got caught up in it mm -hmm. because the devices are super powerful and they're dopamine responders. Mm -hmm. And so what that means is, for your listeners that may, may or may not know what dopamine, it's a chemical, it's a stimulator. Our phones are like a slot machine, like a slot machine. It's like, you know, you, you, it's like you pull the lever when you turn it on. Oh, did I get a text? What's on my Facebook? So one of the, the things I want to share with you is time cleansing your phone. And this is a very powerful tip. Uh, it just popped in. I want to make sure you guys get this, is that the phone. So in, the, in my book, the research I talk about the phone is that they found that after researching 100 plus people, they put a monitor on, they touch, swipe, and click their phone an average of 2,600 times a day. Wow. 2,600 times. That's four hours of time on the phone. And so if we can take control, this is a big area for me, right? Because I want people to perform when they have the time. So a couple simple things. Um, that we can do. Number one is I, I would normally, if I was on TV or I should have brought my phone out today, but my phone's not here. It's in the other room. Same with mine. Mine's saying, so, I'm, but, I'm pretty, totally. But, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you what to do. Number one is you can grayscale your phone. So your phone has a feature where you can turn it to black and white or grayscale. That's number one. Now here, here's why we do it. It's, it makes us less charm to the phone. We won't be like connected to drawing to it. Okay. So that's one. Number two, you take all your apps and you move it to the second screen, okay? Mm -hmm. Second screen. So when you turn it on, you're not inundated. And number three, turn all the notifications off. Now I hear people cringing when I tell them this, where they're like, oh my God, I can't, I'm not gonna have notifications. Yeah, 
if you want to take charge of yourself now, you can set alarms on your phone. You can go to those and actually open them up and check it. But here's why we do it. This tip, I would say, is my number one tip to take control of your life and your time. This, is, this represents hundreds of hours for people. Is that now you have what I call a timeful experience, a timefulness experience with your phone. You go to your phone and you're in charge of that phone. The phone is not in charge of you. And man, there's a, there's a, there's a reduction of stress, anxiety, cortisol. And man, that phone, that phone now is more of an ally for you. It's more of something, a tool for you, not being used against you. And that's when we open up the show, talking about that relationship with time. Actually saying to yourself, I am going to have a positive relationship with time. Time is abundant. It comes from me, and I will create what I need with it. Only if you do these steps. But if you just plug into the world the way it is, it will suck you up, and it will hijack all your time. Let me ask you this question. When you're telling me to put my phone away and it's, it's an easy thing for me to do from an hour or two. But the problem that I see is society is so, they want questions and answers so quickly. They're on email, text. How do you advise your clients by saying it's okay if you don't get back within the next hour or two? They can awesome. still wait. It's a really great question because people feel the pressure to, to respond, right? Yes. So it's really simple. Your coach, train the people around you how you're going to communicate with them. You just train them. Mm -hmm. Out of all my clients, and I have very high performing clients, and I've got you know retired people that have a lot more time on their hands. That they, but here's the thing: when we are connected, present, and and communicate with people, how we're going to communicate, and we negotiate what that is. So if we have a client that says, "Man, I need you to get back to me," but I'll make it up in an hour. Let's let's negotiate that. Maybe we can do that. But let's have a dialogue about how we're communicating. And here's the thing, Gina, no one's doing that. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. So, so, so it's really important to set expectations. We have some clients that may need a quicker response. That's okay. But ask ourselves, how am I going to operate in the world with my technology? And then communicate it. And I do this, you know, one of the stories in the book is about a real estate, a retail real estate broker here in Los Angeles, a high-end guy. We, we, we did a case study on how he compressed a year's worth of sales in one quarter by using a lot of the techniques and the time cleanse and compressing what I call compressing the sales cycle. And one of the things I had him do when he started using my system is when clients would call, he would preset his available time. So if they called, and it was a client, he said, you know what, Bob, thanks for calling. I've got five minutes right now. I saw that you called. If something that we need to do, it takes more than that, we can, we can discuss that later. But I, I saw that it was you and I really wanted to take it. Here's what happens. Bob now knows I got five minutes. Oh, I love that, Josh. He's yeah. passionate, dude. <laughs> Josh, is, Josh is smiling there. Sorry, Stephen. I just see Josh That's smiling right. and going, the posture. I like that. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> so, no, 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 no. So here's what happened. I'm not kidding you. He got like two or three hours back in a day because this guy was the mayor. You call him, he'll talk about the Lakers. He'll talk about, cause he's a great guy, big heart. And I just said, you're giving away your time and you're actually not helping your client. Mm -hmm. If you want social time with them, set a social call up, have a dinner. But when you're working, when they call, and so people were going, oh, great. So this is what I need to do. And all of a sudden these calls that were 20 minutes, an hour, we're done in two or three minutes. Mm -hmm. And so in the book, we train people how to set up calls, but also how to say no. That's huge. Boundaries are huge. That's, so, that's, that's a huge yeah, thing. We'll do a, little, we'll do a little role play. Ask me to go to dinner. Steve, you, can you go to dinner with Steve, me tonight? Let's, uh, let's have dinner tonight. Hey, hey, Josh, you know, I really appreciate you asking me that. Here's the thing. I've got a, a preset commitment with myself Monday through Friday that I don't go out and eat because I'm at the gym at 4.30. So I appreciate you asking, um, but I'm gonna be in the gym early in the morning. So I just said no to you, but not to you. It sets my commitment about what, and people go, oh wow, okay. Now I can say I could see you on Saturday or Sunday or a breakfast, but what happens is we set it up in a way that's not offensive to them and people mm -hmm. really respect that. Yes. Yes, you're not saying no to Josh, you're saying no to his offer. That's the biggest thing. If you can convey to that, that's huge in sales. I like that. And then, yeah, I, I love that. Um, let me ask you about some of the other things that people do wrong uh, as far as being inefficient with time. And the technology is huge. What else do you see people doing wrong? 
Okay, so I'm gonna give you my kind of my top three tips on, on technology and so, you know, and how to perform. So if, you, if you're here in my, my workspace here, I've got a, uh, a desk that is a motorized desk that goes up and down. So I'm in a, in a, in a stool right now. So I'm kind of half seated and standing, keeps my energy up. I'm in a higher performing state. I can sit, I can stand. I've got a 40 inch monitor. The research shows that, that the size does matter when it comes to monitors. <laughs> um, and because um, what I coined a term called document agility. I don't know anyone else to use it, but when you, you can have better document agility, it means you have more screens up, there's less closing. Because think about it, if you have to close a document and go to another, it's a form of multitasking. Mm -hmm. It's a micro form. So when I wrote my book, I just kept upgrading my monitors because it took me one solid year. So that's, that's environmental. Also look at your environment, make sure there's just stuff that's not, that's depressing, that's not old, you want a motivating environment. Um, so then the things for the actual tech and what, how we work. So I suggest working in intervals. I call it interval training. So pick periods of time. I have two that I suggest. A 55-minute work period with a seven-minute rest or a 25 and five. And here's what we do. We shut all the notifications off. We focus on the one task. We, we just dive in. And then we rest. And I mean rest. We unplug. We walk. We meditate. We, we check out ESPN, we lay down, then we come back. And, you know, I can tell you this, writing the book, I found myself, quote unquote, in a time crunch. I had a deadline. And I was like, okay, I was starting to feel the pressure a little bit more. So I got to up my game. So I got up to doing 10 intervals a day. Now, I'm telling you this, this was after like eight months. Because you can't sustain that. But if you can get two or three, four of those intervals in a day, your productivity is going to 3x, 5x. Because you're laser focused. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things to do. The other thing is clustering activities, similar activities the brain loves. If you're going to do emails, do emails. If you're going to do sales calls, do sales calls. If you're going to do research, do research. You get an efficiency off of that. And you know, the other last part of this that I'll throw in, there's lots of tips in the book, but this is really important. Pick your top three things you're going to do that day. And there's so many like, systems out there and there's a lot of good stuff but when you start putting 9 10 15 20 things on your list we know what's going to happen you're not going to get them done mm -hmm. so pick your top 3 and here's something really interesting pick your top 3 but put your intention behind it research shows when you have an intention behind your day and your activities we had about a 20 to 30% increase of nailing that so if i'm saying i want to drop 10 pounds that's my goal so goals this is something new goals are future oriented in time, okay? Intentions are current orientation with time. It's now. So a lot of people set goals, but they feel disconnected. It's too far away. So when we set the daily intention, so it would be for me, I'm gonna eat every three to four hours, my preset meals, and I'm gonna drink plenty of water today. That's my intention. But if I just go, man, I'm gonna lose 10 pounds today, I'm off the reservation. I can tell you, it doesn't work for me. And that's what happens for a lot of people. So when we start adding the intentions behind that and every day, so if we kind of screw it up that day, no problem. We, we renew the intention the next day. And last thing is calendar everything. You got to calendar it because at the end of the day, what I suggest, so when you go through the time cleanse, you recover time. And then what I have people do is reinvest in what I call high ROT activities, return on time activities. And so what I have my clients do is, then calendar it specifically, not I'm going to work out three times. No, no, no. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 5 a.m., 60 minutes at the gym. Boom. And then I pulled something out of David Goggins' book. I don't know if you've listened to his book or seen his book, um, You Can't Hurt Me. Great, great book. A Navy SEAL guy, highly recommend it. Um, he's a no BS guy. And, and so I use something that I learned from him, which is called the accountability calendar or uh, mirror. At the end of the day, just stand in front of the mirror. Look, and what I do is have your, have your calendar, what you were going to do that day, and ask yourself, did I do it? And without any bull garbage, I don't know if you can swear here, <laughs> but um, you, you got to be brutally honest with yourself. Did I do it? Don't make excuses. Don't be hard on yourself. But then just say, why didn't I do it? Okay, what can I get better at tomorrow? And that's the coaching model. That's what you're familiar with. And that's how we make the, the small changes that, man, in a week or two weeks or a month, 
you know, just blow up whatever you're going to do. So those are some tips on how to actually work your day. I like that. So, um, Josh, what, what Steven's talking about is goals, right? And, and goals are outcomes and people are focused on the outcomes. I don't think people should focus on the outcomes. What I think they should focus on is what he's talking about, the intentions or the systems that are going to allow you to achieve your goals, those daily step ladders, as I, I read in the, in, the, in the book, I forgot, stick with it. Uh, great book. You have to fall in love with that system or that process because you're not going to hit the goal. We have students who come and say, I want to get a hundred unit deal. Well, if you're focusing on the hundred unit deal and you don't get it, you're not going to, you're not going to follow through with that goal. But if you can fall in love with calling brokers, uh, underwriting deals, networking, um, doing your education, eventually you will hit that goal. So do not be in love. Don't, don't, don't be beholden to the outcome. Work on the system, enjoy the system, and eventually I think you're going to hit the goal. Does that make sense, Stephen? Absolutely. I got a question for you guys. I didn't ask you. I usually ask up front. What would both of you do if you had an extra hour each day? So what would be the thing that Gino and Josh, you would do with that extra hour? Um, for me, I'd probably spend an extra hour homeschooling the kids, probably sitting down and doing a little more reading with each one of the kids. That's probably what I would do. Uh, awesome. Josh, how about you? Yeah, definitely improving the fulfillment for students, right? That's what I head up, making sure they're making it happen, building more accountability, just increasing the value we add and seeking to serve with that. So, mm -hmm. so I, want to, I want to be of service to both of you, a little mini cleanse. So this is a mini cleanse. All your listeners can do is this. Today, write down all the activities you do. Do it in five minutes. Just write it down. And then ask yourself, okay, what could I eliminate today? That's my what's contributing and contaminating that could get me that hour back. Because... What we do is we get in this mindset of, and you guys are highly efficient already, obviously very successful, but we always have room, right? We're growing. There's always room and looking at that list going, okay, what do I need to stop doing? What do I need to start doing? Or what do I need to change that I'm doing? And I guarantee you, this is a guarantee. I guarantee you, if you write that list and really be mindful with it, you'll, you'll find at least an hour that you'll, you know what? It's time to change how I'm doing that. So that, that's, my, that's my, uh, my suggestion on the mini time cleanse. I like that. I was going to ask you, where do you have people normally start when they come to you? Where do you see people faltering or failing? Where do you say, hey, this is where you should start? Is that, would you say the, my, my, the mini cleanse? Or? Yeah, well, so in the book, you know, it always goes back to, I just ask people. So I do a values alignment. I know you're familiar with this. So in the mm -hmm. book, we look at people's lives and say, what are the top five things that are most important? We got to start there. And I, and I said this yesterday on a, on a TV show, uh, and the hosts were like, huh? I said, here's the great news. You can't have it all. And I, they were like, I they, were totally like they wanted to hear some magical. And yes. this is, and, but I said, here's the thing. You can have what matters most. That's right. And because and there's all this BS about you can have it all. The reality is this. You can, could Olympic athletes, gold medal athletes, many times are not the best social beings or they, they're not well read on them. They're not smart because they are smart, but they had to do this for a long time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that. We want to be balanced in the unbalanced. Like you just, and so I tell people, they're like, well, I want to be, I want to have six pack abs. I want to have the best wife. I want to make, you, you got to pick something here. Now I'm not saying you can't have a high level everywhere, but you are not going to be an Olympic investor and, you know, have 10 other things that you're at Olympic level at. It's just not reality. And if anyone that's telling you that they're lying to you, and I, I'm an expert in time. So yes, I agree. I give you a quick story about my wife. My wife says the same thing. She's homeschooled. We have six kids. Um, and she says to herself, she says, people are kidding themselves if they're going to be a stay at home mom, be a CEO, CEO of a company, I work 60 hours at the company, be the best mom ever. She says it's not possible because there's just so much time that you have and you have to dedicate time to each child. Now, if you have one child, it's different, but in her situation, she's like, I could never go out and work. So she became a life coach so she can claim her own time, spend right. time with clients and all and, and, and empower, impact, empower people that way. But she's like, there's no way you can't have it all. And like you said, she chose to be a mom. She loves that. That's her, awesome. that's her vocation. But I think a lot of people are fooled by that by saying, yeah, I can do it. You can't do it all. And if you're going to do it all, you're not going to do it all really well, right? What is it, Jack of all right. trades, the master of none? Is that, is that, is that, is that the guy? Exactly. More, more true than ever. And here's the thing. You can change the quality. This goes back to the timefulness component. You can change the quality and the performance with an hour. When mm -hmm. you use tools and techniques we're talking about, what you normally did in an hour, 
you get to two X, three X, but here, here it goes back to legacy. You have a deeper connection because really ultimately what I want out of this book, we talked about memories, but it's about being relevant with your time. Mm -hmm. So that's first connecting to your own talents and gifts, maximizing that, and then bringing that to the collective. I mean, we're here to make this place a better place. We're in a world where people just want to be seen. It's an epidemic, but are you being relevant? Are you making a difference in the quality of your life and the people, the quality of others? I mean, you guys are of service. It's, you know, that's what your commitment is, same here. But man, people are just walking around, just trying, just sucking stuff in. And that's why we have more depression, more suicide. It's just, we got to get back to what matters. And that's what, when I'm teaching with the time cleanse, it provides a unique opportunity to stop and ask the question, am I doing the right thing in the right way with my time? Mm -hmm. And there's a system then to get it back, to then reinvest what you want, so you can have ultimate freedom. I mean, your, your, your business, you know, from a financial perspective, in my opinion, is about creating freedom. And freedom is, I can do what I want with my time when I want. Mm -hmm. The income is a mechanism. And so when we get, oh, wow, okay, and we can make these moments mean so much more when we just stop and be timeful and just say, okay, I'm here right now. I'm seeing you. You're seeing me. I mean, look, this is awesome. I'm having a great conversation. I'm creating a great memory with you and Josh. I mean, Josh, not so much because of his schooling, but you know, <laughs> we went to school, but that's okay. Um, but, you know, this is a connected experience that we're, you know, creating a good memory about. Mm -hmm. We have that choice. I agree. Uh, guys, let's take a quick break for our sponsors. Gino, I know a lot of our listeners are wanting to take their multifamily investing business to the next level. I know that you've been hard at work helping Jake and Gino students do just that using our framework. Can you explain to the listeners how they can get our help? Guys, we've been hard at work growing our community of like-minded investors and the results of our members has been nothing short of incredible. We're looking to grow this amazing group. What we're looking for is those who want to follow our proprietary framework that we've created. Buy right, manage right, and finance right. Leverage our connections, education, and mentorship as ways to take your business to the next level. So if you're interested in finding out more about how you can become a part of our amazing community, apply to work with us at jakeandgino.com forward slash apply. Fly. Now, Steve, before we transition into the short uh, question segment, I, I just have one more question for you. If you could just give the listeners out there just your best tip to reclaim time and to, and to really activate that time cleanse, what would it be? Best tip is this, you know, we covered a little bit, but I'll, I'll just give it to you is that today, right now, own your time. I mean, just really go on that time excuse diet. Stop using the excuse of not going to the gym, not investing because it's time. It's not. Look in the mirror. Realize this, I'm time, I'm going to have the best relationship with it, and I'm going to start going for it. Because I say this phrase, it's your time. That means that you own it, but it's also your time to freaking make your move now. Mm -hmm. That's my tip. Very empowering there. Steve, you know, I got another couple questions for you. So awesome. you're obviously a high performer there. What's your favorite book you've ever read and why? I'm going to, you know, there's, man, that is such a good question and a tough one but I'm going to go to one that changed my life and it's called wherever you go, there you are. It's by John Kabat-Zinn. So mindfulness, what I call now timefulness that I coined is being present in the moment. And so that book is many chapters about how to practice just being here right now. Not everyone has to meditate. I have a meditation practice. I teach that in the book. There's a free download where it's a guided meditation, but it's just practicing being present right now. And so that book 10 years ago started me on my path, which is an integral part of my coaching, my training, and my life. Love it. You know, I got another question for you. So there's two ways to learn, right? You can learn through the School of Applied Knowledge, which is books, and that's what you're teaching here, how to people how to reclaim their time, but also the School of Hard Knocks. What's a lesson you had to learn in your life through the School of Hard Knocks and a way that someone, a listener, could avoid the same mistake? Great. Well, it's going, to have, it's going to talk about our rivalry of football schools, right? So, um, so in the book, I tell a story about my football career. You know, I grew up, I'll make this uh, a long story longer. Um, I grew up, got a, a junior college scholarship because I was undersized. I uh, got a scholarship to Western Michigan. First day of spring practice, I tore my hamstring. And that hamstring injury happened two more times in the next three years. And I changed schools 
and I kept pushing against life. Like life was showing me something. It was saying, Stephen, you are not going to be a professional football player. After the second hamstring tear, I was like, nope, I'm going to keep doing it. And the hard knocks told me something. I didn't stop and listen to myself and like what was really important. All I ever wanted to do was be successful. And I had so low, low self-esteem at the time. I thought oh, football was the only thing. Otherwise, I was going to be a loser. And so, you know, the advice I give to myself now is, and to people listening, is to stop and pay attention to what the universe is saying, what the, what the feedback is. Because I wasted a lot of time when I could have simply shifted gears. That's huge. You know, one takeaway there is I think you attach your self-worth to an outcome of a goal. And, and I truly believe if we can focus on, like we talked about the process and fall in love with that and become detached to the outcome, we know we're moving in the right direction. So that's huge. What about, yeah. you know, a big project that you're excited about that you have on the horizon right now? Give me one of those. Well, it's the book. I mean, it's real simple. I mean, it's just, it's, it's coming out, um, you know, now. And it's the media tour. It's expanding that. I have a plan on an app and other things for people to monitor their time. But really the big project is to help people on a global scale get their time back, but not just get their time back, really create the memories that matter and create a legacy. Be clear on what you want to leave this world, how you want to leave it better. Incredible. And lastly, how, how can the listeners reach you? How can they get a hold of you? Sure. So I got a couple of things. I got an offer, some offers for your listeners, which I'm, I'm so excited to, to get their hands on. One is a free download of my 10 tips and tools to reclaim your time and perform. You can get that at stephengriffith.com forward slash wheelbarrow. So that's connected to that. And then also, um, if they order the book, they get a free masterclass, eight videos. I take them step by step on how to do the time cleanse. You get a free download with that. So that's where they can get a hold of me. And you know, ultimately, like I said, you know, I want people to get their time back. So Here's a, a couple of gifts for them. Love it. Gino, let's give the listeners a wrap of what we learned today. Well, I, I've got three things written down here. Number one, everyone needs to grayscale their phone. Number two, take all apps to the second screen. And number three, <laughs> the most painful one, turn off all notifications. Just try it. Be open-minded. Be what Ray Dalio says. Be radically open-minded. Just try it. What's the worst thing? If you fail after a day or two, you put them back on but you'll never know unless you do it. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to have to feel a sense of joy and relief and you don't hear that phone binging and it might be something different. Don't be the guy that wakes up in the morning and checks his email as soon as he wakes up. Maybe put the phone away and keep it shut off and maybe at 10 o'clock after you've had a cup of coffee and done an hour of solid work, you open up your email. Just try to do something different because I know we can all reclaim our time as far as us you know, being efficient with our time. I think we, can, we all have the ability to do that, Josh. Um, one thing I just want to tell the listeners, if you guys like the show, leave a review, please subscribe to the show. It really helps our, um, you know, our viewership on iTunes. Um, Steve, any last parting words? I, I just, um, I'm going to say one last thing. and It's really simple. I, I want you and all your listeners just to imagine a life where you're connected with time. You're in the flow. It's easy. You're motivated. You're focused and you're getting what you want. That's possible. That sounds good. Well, Josh, I, 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 I'm glad that you jumped on with me here, Josh, because I don't want to be lonely in the podcast. I always need a compadre, and you made a great compadre today. And, Stephen, I want to you know, thank you for taking the time out of your day. Making time for me today was really That's important. Right. I'm glad I connected with you. It was a lot of fun. Everybody, check out the stuff in the show notes. It's important. This is a really important topic. If you want to make more money, you need more time. You need to claim more time. So let's start by implementing Stephen's strategies. Once again, guys, thanks a lot. Uh, Hope you all Thanks, have a guys. great day. Thank you. Thank you.